Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon everyone and welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Today I've got about 45 or 50 feet of metal fencing that I need to install on a particular project. And what I got to do is I got to build some panels and uh, I want to show you an easy way, the way I do it anyway, if you're going to be installing a long run of metal fencing. Uh, these panels are going to be about five and a half feet tall and about six and a half feet long and on one end there's going to be a long tail that's actually going to be going into a concrete footing into the ground and the next panel will be welded to that panel and so on and so forth so forth to create the length that you may need so let me show you how i build those panels let's get started on today's video all right so we're going to start out uh, with some uh, fencing material here now the material of choice that i like to use for fencing like this is inch and a half square tube now the wall thickness here is 063, which is about a sixteenth of an inch. Now I get a lot of people ask me about different wall thicknesses and what size they should use. Now this works the best for me for, for most fencing and most gates that I use. Uh, there are thicker, you know, you got 095 and eighth of an inch, but that stuff becomes very heavy and very, very hard to work with. Uh, this is fairly lightweight yet very durable. All right, well all the pieces uh, cut that I need for the uh, first panel uh, you can see that I'm just setting my table dogs in and I'm getting everything square this is a good way for me to, to start off and get everything perfectly square and then clamping everything in place at that point now this is a little bit longer than what uh, I need so I've got my fab block squares right here I got these at uh, weldtables.com and it allows me to extend the table just a few more inches in order to make everything fit on my table. Now I've pre-cut the pickets here. These are 5 8 square tube, uh, 063 wall thickness. I've pre-cut those just because I didn't want to, uh, you know, show that's uh, quite a process, but you get the idea. And I'm placing them in place right here. Now you can see that I've got my wood spacers. Here in California, I can't exceed four inches. So these are three and three quarters. And I'm well inside. And I've got some uh, shims to shim them up to get it in the center of the panel. So the first thing I want to do is to get everything locked in completely uh, all the way around so I, to be sure that I can square everything up. Once this is welded here on this side, I got this picket welded in. I'll have the frame completely buttoned up and welded together. And we're going to check for square right here. You do that by measuring a diagonally across either side and the dimension needs to be exactly the same. If it is, then you are square. All right, so then it's just the process of welding the pickets in. And what I like to do here is just tack them in place, or I should say weld one side uh, and then put my spacers and move on down. And I've mentioned this in other videos. It, it is important uh, to check for square about every second or third picket. If you don't, um, you don't do this, it's very easy to get out of square. And when you get out of square, bad things happen. And before you know it, you're going to have a crooked fence panel. Trust me, I've learned the hard way. Uh, and I'm not going to make that same mistake. So definitely when you're putting these things together, check for square every couple times, every couple pickets. Keep be sure and keep everything uh, nice and plumb. And you can make those adjustments. It does start to get out of square, you know, by an eighth of an inch. You just make those adjustments as you go. You know, I get a lot of people too. Um, you know, I'm old school. I'm by myself here. You know, <laughs> you know, I'm over 60 and for me to to do work like this I'm by myself so I'm kind of do the old school way and this is why I prefer not to do work like this that's maybe more than 50 feet because it's just monotonous it's boring you can see that I'm having to move from one side of the table to the other side of the table back and forth it takes a long time if you had some help if you had another guy you could have two welders you could have two guys welding on both sides and and maybe another guy doing the cutting and, and you can probably make a hundred feet of this easily in a day uh, but for me, I'm by myself, and uh, I just, uh, this is the way I operate. Now, I also want to mention, you see what I'm doing here. You know, I start with these blocks, and when I get about 
two thirds of the way through, I double check and be sure that I'm gonna land with the spacing equal. A lot of times it's not perfect and you need to make adjustments. And that's what I'm having to do right here. Uh, I'm double checking. I may be having to, to shorten this up by an eighth of an inch. Uh, just so when I get to the end of the panel, um, they're equally spaced and you know you really can't tell the difference even a quarter of an inch you can shorten them up by a quarter of an inch and you can gain a lot uh, in just a short distance if you had to uh, this right here i believe i just had to make an adjustment on the last four or five uh, pickets uh, about an eighth of an inch maybe a little less and that's something you're never going to see in the panel now these guys I i'm getting lots of comments in the comment section saying that there's there's different ways of doing it um, you know, there's programs out there uh, that you can refer to that, that gives you uh, the dimensions you need based on the picket size and the spacings you want. And, and I'm sure that there is, and I'm, I'm not saying don't do that. By all means, if that's an easier and better and faster way for you, you can. But like I said, uh, I'm just, uh, <laughs> you can't teach an old dog new tricks uh, I've been doing this for a long time and this is what I'm most comfortable with and this is just the way uh, that I like doing it uh, but according to a lot of people in the comments there's there's programs out there that uh, help you along with this all right so I'm right down here to the end of uh, just getting this first panel put together and then what I want to do is flip it over and well you can see before I flip it over I'm going to go ahead and get uh, this welded out on both sides down up and down either side uh, before I flip that over you know again I can't tell uh, uh, you know th this video is mainly about showing showing you how to uh, to quickly make a couple panels uh, or several panels if you're doing a big job uh, and this is how I do it now I'm fortunate enough to have a welding table that allows me to keep everything nice and flat. If you didn't have this, uh, you'd be working maybe off the ground or, or um, you know, whatever you do, it's important to keep everything secure because, uh, you know, things move around and if you had a way to, to, you know, fasten it to the ground or the table or whatever it is you're working off of, uh, that's always the best way. And like I've mentioned before in my other videos uh, with fencing and gates is I like to weld all the way around. Like I mentioned, there's there's big box stores or other companies, maybe online you can buy these panels that are pre-made. They are not welded all the way around. They're just kind of welded in both the front and the back and that's it. Uh, I like to go all the way around. Uh, it's just something that for me, it, it just makes for a really good product and that's just the way I like to do it. All right, so now I'm going to flip this thing around. Oh, that was it. <laughs> I was done with it. You know, I can't keep up with the videos sometimes uh, of where I'm at and what I'm doing. That's one panel complete. <clears throat> this is the second panel, and I've already cut, uh, finishing up the cuts right here and getting ready to lay the second panel out. Now, I'm only going to show you just a couple panels right here because they're all the same, and it's mainly about just telling you this, the things, that, how I go about doing it. And maybe that's going to help you uh, if you choose to do this. You know, and having a good cutoff saw is another is another plus here. Uh, you know, the angles are just right on the money with this. And uh, you know, if you didn't have that, uh, you just use a cutoff wheel. I would imagine on a on an angle grinder that works too. But it sure is nice to have a nice saw. All right, just laying all the pickets in place. You know, it's always good to do this too. Uh, lay the pickets dry in like this, and so when you weld it together on either end, because what happens as soon as you start welding these things in, it's it likes to try to draw in. Uh, you know, the long pieces uh, have a tendency to want to warp a little bit, and so if you keep your pickets in place like this, it stops it from wanting to come in. It's just a different angle about, uh, you know, different angle for showing you how it, how it's done I also want to talk about the welders you know a lot of people ask me what type of machine you use what type of welding you use I operate off the HTP uh, propose 220 MTS that is what I'm using for most of the, my fencing that I use I've got several different machines 
and they're all set up for different applications. But when I'm doing fencing or gates or uh, such, this is the machine that I like to use. Um, I operate, I've used several different wires. I've done 023, 030, 035, 045. I've used all the, all the different filler wires. They all work well. You just need to adjust your voltage and your uh, inches per minute according to the filler wire you're using. Uh, for me, I pretty much use 035 for everything. Uh, and my machine, uh, 250 inches a minute, uh, works well for me on this uh, wall thickness of 063 or 16th of an inch. Uh, the gas I use is 90-10, 90 90% 90 argon, 10% CO2. Uh, works well for me. It welds clean. 7525 is the most common. Uh, that works well too. Uh, so don't think you have to use 90. 10, that's just what I use. Uh, it will just a little bit cleaner, a little bit less spatter, and uh, that's what works well for me. Uh, let's see, different machines. Yes, you don't need to have a, a machine like this. Uh, you can use a 120 volt machine that you plug into your ordinary wall uh, socket. If you're using, if you're building a gate with this wall thickness here, you can't really exceed much more than an eighth of an inch on a 120 volt machine. Uh, that's the pretty much max capacity. Uh, you don't have to use gas. You could use flux core. Uh, that works well. As a matter of fact, um, that's the machine that I use when I take this out into the field to install it. I have a HTP MIG 140, and that's a 120 volt machine. And I've got set up with flux core. I don't have to deal with gas out in the field. And it welds this together just fine, and it's clean. Uh, so there's a little bit more spatter uh, with that. Plus, you got to chip the slag off if you're using flux core. Uh, but uh, it works well for installing out in the field. And you could use that machine or a machine like that for building this uh, panels like this as well. If that's what you have at home. You can see all this back and forth stuff. <laughs> you know. Sometimes I always say, man, I, I need to get a helper in here. If I had a helper, it would go so much smoother. But once this job's out of the way, the next job comes in. And you know what? It doesn't require a helper. And, you know, I'm, I'm just by myself. So um, all is good. And I kind of like I kind of like working by myself anyway. I, I just work at my own pace. All right, so I'm just finishing this up. Um, I've gave you guys enough information. I'm going to just kind of speed the rest of this little bit of a section of the video up. It's pretty much exactly the same as what uh, um, I did on the first panel. So, you know, you'll see how this is done. Um, and you can see by myself <laughs> flipping this thing around. Pain in the butt, but... Uh, Hey, if that's all it is, it's all good. All right, so I have several panels of these, of these to make and some filler panels as well. And so there's the second one complete and the third and the fourth. And the fifth, plus a couple of filler panels in there. Anyways, I hope uh, you guys, if you're looking to do something like this at your uh, house or a project, that you learned something from this. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.